The Tesla Model S was a revolutionary car when it was first released in 2012. Its impressive range and efficiency has yet to be beat by even modern electric cars as we move into 2020. But how much has the Model S improved nine years later? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. So Time Magazine recently released their list of the top 10 gadgets of the 2010 decade, and they included the Model S as one of the top 10 gadgets, and they had this to say in the article. The electric sedan has slowly reshaped the trajectory of the automotive industry, forcing competitors to embrace a battery-powered future instead of the gas-guzzling present, and challenging the belief that electric cars can't be cool. Features like downloadable software updates, a huge touchscreen display and advanced autopilot capabilities make it feel like a vehicle from 2022 instead of 2012. Think of the Tesla Model S as the iPod of cars, if your iPod could do 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. Here's something that Elon Musk had to say about the 2012 Tesla Model S when it was released at the Model S delivery event. It's showing that, um, that an electric car can in fact be the best car in the world. That's what makes it really important. Yeah. So what, what, what we believe customers will, will discover, um, as we've talked about a little already, is that this is the best car in, in, in every dimension that matters, uh, whether it's performance, safety, uh, handling, the uh, interior, the, the, the technology, the interface, uh, the, 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 the styling, aesthetics, um, it's really something that's fundamentally better. Um, and I mean, that's, that, that's thanks to, to the fantastic team we have here at Tesla. So I just want to say thank you guys, for your rock. So obviously the Model S was impressive in 2012, but it has gotten even better over the years. And now I want to talk about the main big upgrades that have been done to the Model S in the nine years since it's been released. Now in this video, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the aesthetics of the vehicle, both interior and exterior, design changes and things like that. I'm gonna focus mainly on the performance, the technology, and the efficiency changes in the vehicle, as well as the costs. It is of course important to note that in 2016, they did do a front end redesign of the vehicle, took away the nose cone and gave it that more clean look. The first category that I want to discuss comparing the 2012 Model S to the 2020 Model S is the performance aspects of the vehicle. So I pulled this graphic up from an old Tesla Motors website page that was put up in 2012. And here it compared the different variants of the vehicle that were available. You'll notice there the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack for both the standard and the performance was in production and available at this time with a range of 265 miles. So when I'm talking about performance, I want to talk about these three metrics, the zero to 60 miles per hour time, the quarter mile time, and the top speed. So based on an archived page of Tesla's website, the 2012 Model S performance with the 85 kilowatt hour pack was able to do zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds or zero to 100 kilometers in 4.5 seconds. The 2020 Model S performance has gotten that number all the way down to 2.4 seconds. Of course, that's with ludicrous mode, which is now included in the 2020 Model S at the standard price. And it goes from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.6 seconds. Very impressive and a huge two second shaving off the zero to 60 mile per hour time and almost two seconds off the zero to 100 miles per hour time. A really impressive update. The quarter mile time has also improved quite substantially. The 2012 Model S performance was able to do the quarter mile based on Tesla's data at 12.6 seconds. And I pulled up a video, which I'll link in the description below. And somebody was able to clock a 10.61 second quarter mile with the 2020 Model S performance. That's the Raven upgrade. And then the other metric to compare between these two vehicles, which I don't think is quite as important as these others two, but it is important to note that the 2012 Model S had a top speed of 130 miles per hour or 210 kilometers an hour, and the 2020 Model S performance has a top speed of 163 miles per hour or 261 kilometers per hour. 
In 2019, Tesla released what they called the Raven update for the Tesla Model S and the Model X. This included adaptive air suspension, which gave the vehicle a lot better ride and better adaptive dampening. It also, they replaced the front induction motor with a more efficient motor uh, from the Model 3, which is a permanent magnet synchronous reluctance motor. And the combination of these two, two motors allows for increased efficiency without losing any power and a faster charge rate of up to 200 kilowatts. The 2020 Model S, of course, has these Raven updates. The next category that I want to talk about comparing the 2012 Model S to the 2020 Model S is the range and efficiency increases. So the 2012 85 kilowatt hour standard Model S was able to get 265 miles or 426 kilometers of range. Whereas the 2020 Model S with a 100 kilowatt hour pack is able to go 373 miles or 600 kilometers, and that is a 40% increase in range. When it comes to efficiency, it takes 38 kilowatt hours of power for the 2012 Model S to go 100 miles, and it takes 8 kilowatt hours less, 30 kilowatt hours, for the 2020 Model S long range to go 100 miles. That is a 27% efficiency improvement between the two vehicles. The next important thing to talk about is the cost of these vehicles. With all of the features and improvements we've already discussed with more to come, it would make sense if the 2020 Model S was quite a bit more expensive than the 2012 Model S. But as you'll see in a minute, this is not the case. The non-performance single motor 2012 Model S was sold for $79,000 $900 in 2012. In 2020, you can buy the 100 kilowatt hour Model S with a dual motor for $79,900. For the performance models, the 2012 85 kilowatt hour single motor performance model was sold for $94,900. The 2020 100 kilowatt hour dual motor performance with ludicrous included is $99,990. When you think about these prices virtually being the same, but including the dual motor, extra range, and other features that we didn't even discuss aesthetically, it's incredible that Tesla has been able to keep the prices the same, especially when you consider inflation. Now, I think it's kind of fun to see what kind of value that these cars offered in 2012 and what kind of value these cars give in 2020. And something that I thought was interesting and really kind of helps tell the picture here of how much the Model S has improved since 2012 is the value, meaning how much are you paying per mile of range? So the 2012 non-performance Model S, you were paying $301 per mile of range or $188 per kilometer of range. The 2020 non-performance Model S, you're paying $214 per mile of range or $133 per kilometer of range. So quite a substantial difference there between $301 per mile and $214 per mile. When we're comparing the performance Model S, the 2012 performance was $358 per mile of range and $223 per kilometer of range. And the 2020 performance Model S is $287 per mile of range or $179 per kilometer of range. Once again, a large difference there, making the 2020, based on this fact alone, a great deal. But of course, there are so many other added features. What about the software? and the hardware updates that have happened over the nine years. Of course, in 2012, Autopilot did not yet exist on the Model S. Business Insider had an article, and this is what it said about Autopilot. Autopilot became an add-on option in September of 2014. By the end of the year, all new Model S cars included the camera, radar, and ultrasonic sensor hardware necessary for the addition. The functionality could be activated at any time for an additional fee. So, as I mentioned, the 2012 Model S had no autopilot, and it didn't have the sensors necessary for autopilot. Yet here we are in 2020, and the 2020 Model S includes Hardware 3, which is a new Tesla-designed full self-driving computer, which we'll talk about in a minute. And it also includes some notable features like standard autopilot being included in the price of the vehicle, 
If you pay for the full self-driving, you have features like navigate on autopilot, which can change lanes and take exits for you when on the freeway. It includes features like smart summon, where you can summon your vehicle to you from a parking spot to the front of a store, for instance, or wherever you want the car to come find you. Of course, it includes a very important feature, sentry mode, which allows you to have video footage anytime anything is triggered in front of your car or there's an event where somebody hits your car and you're not in it. Dash cam, of course, is important. So it automatically records both front, side, and back views of your car. So if you do have an incident, you'll be able to show the video footage of that event. Of course, they recently added YouTube, Netflix, karaoke, and video games to the cars. And one of the newest updates that is rolling out here at the very end of 2019 included camper mode and the ability for it to read your text messages from your cell phone. So these are just a few of the updates. This is not all the updates. This is not all the software things that have happened. But these are just some of the notable ones and some of the important ones that I thought it good to talk about. So as I mentioned just a second ago, to dive slightly in more about the full self-driving computer that Tesla has designed, we learned about this in the autonomy day earlier this year when Elon Musk and the autopilot team spent several hours going over all the details of the full self-driving computer. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you can go watch that on Tesla's YouTube channel and they can talk about all the different stats on that particular computer. But just for the sake of this video, it's quite a bit faster and it's able to do quite a bit more processing, allowing Tesla to get closer to full self-driving and should be able to be feature complete with this particular hardware computer. The last thing I'd like to talk about with the Tesla Model S is what about in the future, what will happen to the Tesla Model S? So earlier this year, we heard about the Tesla Plaid Model S and Model X coming by the middle to end of 2020. And they talked about some of the features of that, but one of the most notable features was that it's actually a three motor design similar to what is going to be in the Roadster. We expected, of course, as Elon Musk confirmed, to have a larger battery pack than 100 kilowatt hours. Of course, the three motor design from the Roadster. So that should give it increased range, of course, increased performance, both on the quarter mile and zero to 60. And interestingly enough, it should be able to outpace the more expensive Porsche Taycan. So the Tesla Model S was very impressive in 2012. It's even more impressive as we move from 2019 to 2020. And I can't even imagine how much better it will be when the Plaid Model S comes out at the end of 2020. Tesla is constantly improving their vehicles and their lead on other manufacturers and technology range and performance grows more and more every year. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed hearing about the improvements of the Model S. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing so you can find out when more content comes out in the future. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button so more people can find the video as well. Thank you so much.